when you're solving a three variable system of equations, the first step is you want to choose one of these equations to set equal to a single variable because we're going to substitute it in so that we can eliminate one. Now I noticed that this x right here has a coefficient of one and what I always try to do is I try to find whatever variable has the lowest coefficient and one is as low as it goes. So I'm going to actually use this bottom one. Therefore I'm going to put a star by it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it. So I have negative x plus 3y plus 2b equals 7. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and set this equal. I want to have x equals something. So I'm going to have to get rid of this negative. I'm also going to have to get rid of these two terms and move them over to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line for my equal sign, just like if I was trying to solve it, because technically I'm solving for the variable x. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move over my 2b. So I'm going to subtract 2b. They cancel. I'm going to put minus 2b on the right side because we've got to keep it balanced. I'm also going to go ahead and subtract 3y. So minus 3y. And you'll notice there's no b's, there's no y's over here. So technically it's really like saying 0 minus 2b. But I don't write the 0. I just move the term over. Now that I've got this, I'm going to rewrite what we have here. So currently I have negative 2b minus 3y. And this 7, well, you might be tempted to combine it with one of these numbers. Please do not, because notice it does not have a variable. It is a constant. So I always like to put my constant at the end. So I'm just going to bring it over and put it right at the end, plus 7. Now we still have this negative x on the left side of our equation. I'm going to extend my line. And I do want to get rid of this negative sign because we don't want a negative x. We want it to be positive x equals something. So I'm going to go ahead and divide out that coefficient of negative 1 because remember there's always an invisible 1 in front of every variable. And I'm going to divide out that negative sign with it. So by dividing out negative 1, it's going to change it to a positive x. But I also have to divide every term on this side by negative 1 as well. Now negative 1 and going to negative 1 one time and that's simply going to leave me with x. And then my line represents an equal sign. And when I do the math over here, anytime you're divided by negative 1, it's really just going to change the sign of each one of these values. So negative 2 divided by negative 1 makes it a positive 2b. So I just lost the negative sign. Negative 3y divided by negative 1 leaves me with positive 3y. And positive 7 divided by negative 1 leaves me with negative 7. Now, why this is not my final answer, this is part of my answer, because now I have x equal to something. And I can substitute this value in place of the x's that are inside of the other two equations. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite this top equation that you see here. But in place of the x, I'm going to go ahead and substitute 2b plus 3y minus 7. So let me rewrite this and show you what it looks like and write 4, but in place of x, I'm going to put what x is equal to, 2b plus 3y minus 7. Close parenthesis, and then it's plus 3y plus 4b equals negative 10. I'm also going to go ahead and write over here step 2. substitute for x. Alright, so at this point, really all we have to do is now distribute this 4 to these three terms, and then we're going to combine like terms, and we'll have a new equation. So for instance, I have 4 times 2b, and that's going to leave me with 8b. And then I have 4 times 3y. And that's going to leave me with 12 y's. And all I'm doing is just multiplying the first two digits, right? 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. And then I'm going to do 4 times negative 7. So 4 times negative 7 is going to give me negative 28. Then I'm going to bring down the rest of the values. So everything else just gets brought down. 
So we have plus 3y plus 4b equals negative 10. Now what I want to do at this point is I want to combine like terms. I look and I say, well, I got an 8b and I have a 4b. So I'm going to box those. I can put those two together. So 8 plus 4 is 12. So that will leave me with 12b. I have 12y and 3y, so I'm going to circle those. So 12 plus 3 is 15. So now I have plus 15y. And then I have this negative 28. I'm going to bring it down. Negative 28. And that's equal to, and I'm going to bring down this negative 10. All right, so we're almost ready to use this. But one thing that we have to do from this point is I need to go ahead and move this 28 over to the other side. So it's subtracting. So I'm going to do the opposite. Use inverse operations to move it. That will zero out 28 on the right. And then I'm going to add 28 to the right side. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add. And it gives me 18. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down what's over here on the left. So now we have 12b plus 15y. And it was important to do this because notice now we just have two variables. So we're going to do the same process with the second equation so that we can have another equation that just has two variables. And then we're going to solve it the way we would normally solve a system, um, either by elimination, graphing, or substitution. In this case, because of the way I'm setting it up, I am going to use elimination to get rid of it. But let's go ahead and look at this second equation that we have here which is 5x plus 4y plus 4b equals negative 5. And now we're going to substitute for x on this one, just like we did with the other. So since we already did the first one, the 4x plus 3y plus 4b equals negative 10, I'm going to go ahead and just put a check by it. And now we're going to do our second one. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing this. And notice that we have 5x. So I'm going to put 5 but instead of an x, I'm going to go ahead and put a set of parentheses. And I'm going to put what x was equal to. Um, once again, we're going to be using what we have found here. When we solved for x, it's equal to 2b plus 3y minus 7. So that's what we're going to be substituting in. So I'm going to substitute that right now. So I have 2b plus 3y minus 7. And then I'm going to continue to write the rest of this, right? So this represents our 5x. This is 5. And then we substituted what x was equal to in place of the variable x. And then we have plus 4y. So plus 4y. And then we have plus 4b is equal to negative 5. All right, so I'm going to check this one off. So now we've substituted for x. We're going to go ahead and distribute and then combine like terms, and we'll have our second equation ready. So if I distribute, I have 5 times 2b. And I'm just going to write that out on this one. we got a little bit more room. So 5 times 2b. 5 times 2 is 10. That actually gives me 10b. And then I have 5 times 3y. 5 times 3y, and 5 times 3 is 15, so I end up with 15y. And then we'll do 5 times negative 7. And 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Now the rest of these terms, we're just going to bring them down. So I'm going to bring down this plus 4y. I'm going to bring down plus 4b. And I'm going to bring down the negative 5 and my equal sign. All right. So at this point, we want to go ahead and we want to combine like terms. So I notice that I have a 10b here. And I have a positive 4b here. So I'm going to put those b values together. 
move it up just a little bit. So 4 plus 10 is going to be 14. Next, I notice that I have two different y variables. So I'm going to put those two like terms together. So 15 y's plus 4 y's. And 15 plus 4 is 19. So that's going to give me plus 19 y. The negative 35, I'm just going to bring it down. Haven't done nothing with it yet. So negative 35 is equal to, bring down my equal sign, and negative 5. Now we do want to simplify this because it is going to make it easier. So I'm going to go in and combine this 35 with this negative 5 over here. In other words, I'm going to draw a line. Imagine you're just trying to get this 35, this constant, away from these two variables. So plus 35, plus 35. And that way we're combining anything that can be combined to make this as simple as possible to work with. So if I do that, we have negative 5 plus 35. That way you can see what I'm doing. And notice it gives me positive 30. So this over here becomes 30. Bring down my equal sign. And the only thing left over now is these two terms on the left. 14b plus 19y. So again, we eliminated one of the variables by doing this, and so we only have two variables now. Now we had done that with the other, and I'm gonna write it down as well. So I'm gonna go back to what we had found when we did that with the initial one, All right? And so we had 12b plus 15y equals 18. So I'm gonna write that underneath it. 12b plus 15y equals 18. All right, so now what we want to do, now that we got these two equations, we're going to go ahead and solve using elimination. So I'm going to put step three. Solve using elimination. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, first of all, you could simply, if you wanted to eliminate one of these, I usually go with the smaller numbers. So notice 14 and 12, while they're large numbers, they're still smaller than 19 and 15. So what I would do is just say, okay, I could multiply these two numbers together and figure out a number that they have in common. Um, that's a real easy way, that's quick. But you are gonna be dealing with some large numbers when you do that. Um, you could, if you knew there was a number that both of these went into that was smaller than multiplying 12 to 14, you could do it that way as well. But I think for simplicity of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna multiply them by each other. So I'm gonna get my calculator and just see what that would give me. And uh, so let's see, if we took 14 and we multiplied it to 12, that would give me 168. So that's gonna be my number that I use. Now what I'm gonna do, since I wanna eliminate one of these, I need to make both of these B values 168 because 12 can go to 168 and 14 can go to 168. The other thing is, notice that these are both positive, and I don't need two positives. I need one to be positive and one to be negative, because my goal is to cancel out one set of variables. That way I'm only solving for one variable, because you can't solve for two at the same time. So I'm gonna multiply this top one, I'm gonna put parentheses around it, by negative 12. And the reason I chose negative 12 is first of all, I'm multiplying 14 by the value of 12 because I'm gonna create a like number that can be canceled out. I'm doing it, I'm making it negative because I need one of these to be negative. So I've chosen for the top one to be negative. I am then gonna multiply this bottom one by the 14, but I'm gonna use the positive 14 just like we have on top because that way this term will be positive, this won't be negative when we get our two new equations. Now you do see me putting parentheses around the whole thing, and that's because we gotta make sure that when we do this to eliminate that we multiply this value to every term here. And what I realize is sometimes if we don't put parentheses to remind ourselves, I see a lot of students that don't multiply the first two terms, but they'll forget to multiply the last one on the other side of the equal sign. So as I multiply this out, I'm gonna rewrite it underneath. For instance, this is gonna be 12, negative 12 times 14b. And we've already figured out that if I took 12 and multiplied it times 14, it gives me 168. 
by me multiplying by negative 12, it now gives me a negative 168, which is what I'm going to need to cancel out the value that's going to be below it. So I got 168b. Now I'm also going to multiply that negative 12 to this positive 19. Why? So I'm going to do negative 12 times 19. It gives me negative 228. So then I have negative 228. Why? And then I'm going to take negative 12 and multiply it to 30. So negative 12 times 30. And it gives me negative 360. So equals negative 360. All right, so we have one of our equations done. Now we're going to do the bottom one. I'm going to do 14 times 12. And I know already that it's going to give me a positive 168. Because we had already tested that when we multiplied it initially, right? We said that 14 times 12 was going to give us 168. Now I'm going to take that 14 and I'm going to multiply it to the 15y. So I'm going to do 14 times 15. And it gives me positive 210. Why? And then I'm going to take 14 and multiply it to this 18. So 14 times 18. And it gives me 252. Now, I'm just going to draw lines underneath there because I like to always do a line underneath it because we're going to be doing math from top to bottom. I want you to notice we can cancel out the B's. Why? Because they have the same number and we made one of them negative. So B cancels out. There's no more B values. They become zero. And now we just need to combine our Y values. Negative 228 plus 210. And that is a large number. I'm just going to throw it in my calculator. It'll do all the work. Negative 228 plus 210 and it gives me negative 18. So I have negative 18 y's left. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do negative 360 plus 252. So negative 360 plus 252. And it gives me negative 108. So this is equal to negative 108. So we're almost done. All we have to do now to solve for y is divide by our coefficient of negative 18 on both sides, because remember we have to keep it balanced. So we now need to see how many times can negative 18 go into negative 108. So if I go ahead and get my calculator, and I put in negative 108 in the numerator, and then I go ahead and put my value of negative 18 in the denominator, calculator would do all the work, and notice it gives me positive 6. So my answer is y is equal to positive 6. Now the next step to this problem is we want to go ahead and take that positive 6 and substitute it back into one of these equations here. So here's my chosen equation that I'm going to use to substitute that answer that we just got where y was equal to 6. And what I'm going to do is right follow that step 4. We're going to be substituting for this y value. So I'm just going to put an arrow here. And when we get to that y we are simply going to go ahead and put in our y value. So let me rewrite this. So I end up with 12b plus 15 times my y value that we found that we just solved for, which was 6. And this is all equal to 18. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the math real quick. Start calculating some things. Let me get my calculator. I'm first going to multiply 15 times 6. And it gives me 90. So I'm going to go ahead. This gives me 90. So I'm going to bring down my 12B. That was a positive 90. And I'm going to bring down 18. So we're just going to continue this process, right? We have to move our constant value over to the right. So I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides. Bring down my 12b and 18 plus negative 90. So 18 plus negative 90 
gives me negative 72. So this is negative 72. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and divide out my coefficient in front of B, right? Because we don't want 12 Bs, we just want 1. So I do got to remember to divide on both sides to keep it balanced. And I end up with B is equal to, so let's do negative 72 over 12, and it gives me negative 6. So now we have two answers. We have found that y is equal to 6, and we found that b is equal to negative 6. So now that we got 2, we can go ahead and substitute these back into one of our original equations, and we can find out what the last variable is. Now remember, when we went to our original equations, I'm just going to pull them back up again so you can see them. We had three original equations. It doesn't really matter which one you want to use, but I just think, um, you know, what I may do is go ahead and just use the one that I created right here. X is equal to 2B plus 3Y minus 7. And the reason I say that is because, let's face it, the only variable we haven't found yet is X. And so I'm just going to replace the B with what we found B was equal to and replace the Y with what we found the Y was equal to. And then we'll know what X is. So I'm going to go ahead and write that equation. So I'm just going to draw a line separating this. And I'm going to put step 5. Substitute B and Y to find X. So substitute B and Y to find X. And then we'll have all of our answers. So let me go ahead and write it. I have X is equal to 2B plus 3Y minus 7. Again, this is just that one that we had converted, setting it equal to X. And I'm going to plug in my values now. Now we know that B, we found that B was negative 6. So I'll put a negative 6 right here. And I'm going to leave a little space and put my Y value, which we found Y was equal to 6. And I'm going to bring down the other values that go in front of it. So X is equal to 2 times B, in other words, 2 times negative 6, plus 3 times Y, or plus 3 times 6, because we know Y is 6. And then we'll just bring down our minus 7 at the end. Now you could do this by hand, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the calculator and let it tell me what X is equal to. So I'm going to get my calculator, and I'm going to go ahead and put 2, parenthesis, negative 6, close parenthesis, plus 3, parenthesis, 6, close parenthesis, minus 7. And it tells me it's negative 1. So X is equal to negative 1. So now I have all of my answers. Right, so um, I know that y is equal to 6, b is equal to negative 6, and x is equal to negative 1.